Hello and welcome. Today I'll teach you how to code a simple market making bot which will place bids and offers in the DYDX order book. DYDX is a decentralized crypto exchange which allows you to trade leveraged perpetual contracts. On screen I've provided some disclaimers. Market making involves placing buy and sell orders in the order book to provide liquidity. In doing so we hope people hit our orders and we earn some spread. It's a trading strategy used by professional trading firms to generate income without having to be long or short crypto for a long period of time. The reason we're using DYDX is for a number of reasons. Firstly, DYDX gives us trading rebates, which provides income beyond just trading P&L. Secondly, you can leverage 10x on DYDX, which means you can start market making with a small amount of capital. Thirdly, DYDX is decentralized. A lot of centralized exchanges don't offer derivatives in certain countries. And if you're in one of these countries, you still may be able to trade derivatives on DYDX because of its decentralized nature. Lastly, DYDX is the third largest decentralized exchange by volume and the largest that has an order book structure. More volume means more trading, which equals more profit as a market maker. What you're going to need to start building this bot is a basic installation of Python with the below packages installed. You'll also need a DYDX trading account with API credentials. If you don't have a DYDX account, please visit the link below for a description on how to either open an account or also how to grab your API credentials. I'll put a link to the DYDX API docs on screen where you can find more information about the various features of the API. DYDX provides both a REST and WebSocket API. And today we'll be using the WebSocket API to receive real-time price data from DYDX and the REST API to submit, amend, and cancel orders. WebSockets are essentially just streams of data that get sent from a server and contain price data on the order book. A Python bot will firstly connect to the AVAX WebSocket stream. We'll then process the AVAX price data and determine at what price we should buy and sell. And then we'll submit those orders to the REST API. Every few seconds, we'll cancel those old orders and place new orders as the price of AVAX changes. Now onto the code. Firstly, we will import the dependencies we will need. We need WebSocket, JSON, Time, and Web3 to connect to a WebSocket, and Sorted Dick, Decimal, and Pandas to actually pass the price data. We're also going to need the DYDX Python package, which will help us send orders to the REST API. And those are these last two here. If you don't have the DYDX Python package, you can install it by running a pip install of the package as shown here. The next thing we'll need to do is connect to the DYDX REST API. And this is where you'll need your API credentials. Specifically, you'll need your Ethereum address signed up to DYDX with. You'll also need your API key, an API secret, API passphrase, and also your start private key. Again, I've put a link in the description uh, if you don't know how to get these details from your account. We then make a get account call using the DYDX Python package to get specific account details. And specifically, we need the position ID, which is a bit like an account number. For illustrative purposes, I'll just run through a basic example of how WebSockets work. We interact with WebSockets by defining the WebSocket URL, creating WebSocket app object, and then running the WebSocket app with a run forever function as shown in these three lines of code. Within the WebSocket app, we have to define what we want to do on the open, what we do is we get new messages, and finally what we do on the close. Here, on the open, we'll print opened. We'll then send some data to the DYDX WebSocket. Specifically, we are going to subscribe to some data. The data is going to be order book data. The perpetual contract for that data is going to be AVAX and we're going to include offsets, which I'll explain later. This ws.send then sends that dictionary to the API, and we'll, we therefore subscribe to the WebSocket. Once, once we've subscribed, we'll get messages. In this case, every message will just print the message, but in our trading bot, we'll pass the data and make trading decisions on every message. Lastly, on close, we'll just print closed. I'll just quickly run this basic script, and we'll see what data we get. As you can see, we're getting some data from the WebSocket API. The first thing that we'll get is a message saying that we've subscribed to the WebSocket. And then that message will have an order book snapshot of, in this case, the AVAX order book, which gives us all the prices and sizes at a specific moment in time. 
After the WebSocket API has given us the snapshot, it will then give us these types of messages called channel data messages. And these are essentially just order book updates. So if a order gets canceled, an order, new order gets placed, or orders start trading, these channel data messages will tell us what's happening on a tick by tick basis. What we're essentially gonna need is a function to pass some of this uh, JSON response into an order book that we can then understand and trade off. And that's what this pass message function essentially does. I'm not gonna to go too into depth on how this function works, but essentially the function takes the order book snapshot that we get at the start and reorganizes it and stores it in a dictionary object called dix. The WebSocket API also provides these things called offsets, which record when the snapshot or update was given. And you can see them here. We create a dictionary called offsets to record this data. Then we'll take any new updates labeled channel data and amend our order book dictionary accordingly. So now we're gonna get, actually get into submitting orders into the DYDX order book. But first we have to specify what our bot wants to do. So here we'll be trading AVAX, submitting orders worth one unit of AVAX, which is currently about 120 US. We wanna submit our buy and sell orders 0.2% from the best bid price and from the best ask price. So our buy order will be 0.2 lower than the best bid and our sell order will be 0.2 higher than the best ask. We have our dictionary object, which will store our order book and any updates that we get. We also have our offsets dictionary, which will store what updates that we get in what order. And lastly, we just have some three variables that we'll need to use as we continue to pass data. In terms of our market making script, we'll firstly open a connection to the AVAX WebSocket as we did before. That is, we'll subscribe to the order book data, the ID is AVAX, and we'll include offsets. We'll send this to the WebSocket API using this ws.send function. The on message function is where we'll be market making. We take the message and use the previous pass message to formulate an order book and any updates as shown here. We then take the best bid and the best ask using these two functions and print those so we can observe them. For every 149 messages, we firstly cancel our previous orders using this private dot cancel function from the DYDX API and we'll also cancel our sell order. We then calculate where we want to place our best bid, which is below the best bid, and our sell order, which is above the best ask. The function then sends our orders via the REST API. We need to specify our order parameters. Specifically, position ID is our account ID. Market is AVAX in this case, which is denoted by the security underscore dot name. Side here is in, in this case buy, so we're submitting our buy order. The order type is limit, so that a limit order can sit in the order book as opposed to a market order which gets executed immediately. We'll have true on post only, and what this means is essentially that we'll never cross the spread, i.e. someone has to hit our order for us to trade. Size we specified earlier is one unit of AVAX. The price we calculated before, and lastly, we'll have our order be in the order book for a maximum of two minutes, although we'll likely cancel the order ourselves using some of the code above. We increase the count so that we can continue ticking on the messages. We then use the create underscore order function in the DYDX Python package to actually submit our order via REST API. And we record the results of that order in this bid order dictionary item. And we, we from that item, we can get our order ID, which we store in bid underscore order underscore ID as a variable. Lastly, we just print some details about what we've just done. And next, we just do the exact same thing, but this time we're executing our sell order. So you can see here, we've done order underscore side underscore sell. Um, and we've stored the data as ask underscore dict and also ask underscore order underscore ID. The last thing we do is on close, if our WebSocket does close, we'll print closed. And here we have some of the WebSocket details. And then we essentially just run the script, which is just the function that we've just defined. We'll then run our script and see what it does. As you can see, every time the order book has some sort of new order or an order is canceled, we're getting some new data. We're getting updated prices from the data. And then on the 149th tick, we will be submitting an order, a buy order and a sell order, as you can see here. 
and on the 298th tick, we will cancel those last two orders and resubmit new orders, and so on and so forth. If we go into the DYDX platform, we can see that happening right here. We're submitting new orders by cell. We will cancel those orders as the price updates and submit new buy and sell orders. On the trading tab, we can also see that our orders are in the stack. And hopefully, someone will sweep ABAX up to where we're trying to sell um, and the price of ABAX will then hopefully drop. And that's the market making strategy. So we ran our script for a couple of days and basically it didn't go too well. So I had to add some new features. The first feature that we added was a position balance trade. So essentially what happened when we ran the market making bot for a while is that it would build up a lot of inventory. So for example, it might buy three units worth of AVAX before it uh, was able to sell any. So what I've done here is just with every 419 messages in the WebSocket, the market making bot will firstly get the positions of our account, i.e. if we're long or short AVAX. From that point on, it then determines if we're long or short um, and at what entry price we were long or short in this line of code. We then calculate what our break even price is and we charge some spread on that break even price. We then build our order parameters in the following lines, i.e. if we were long, we would have had to put a sell order at the break even price plus some spread. And then we submit that into the order book and hopefully that will help us um, clear inventory at a quicker rate because the goal of the market making bot is not to be long or short uh, AVAX or any crypto that you're trading for a longer period of time than is uh, necessary. Here are the results of the new market making bot that we deployed over the course of three days. You can see that we made 34 trades. You can see that we made about $3.46, which represents about a 3% return. Um, and I was charging a 0.3 spread from the best bid and ask. The good thing about DYDX is that whilst I made $3.46 in just pure trading PL. I've also been rewarded with DYDX rebates. So if you go into your rewards tab on your account, essentially on DYDX, you will get rewarded some tokens uh, for how much fees you pay and also positions you have on and how much DYDX you've staked. So in, con in addition to the trading PL that I've got, I've also made uh, some amount of uh, PL in DYDX tokens. On screen, I've put some different ideas that you might want to consider in terms of improving the bot. Lastly, I've also put the code on GitHub and you can find the code at the below URL. Thanks for listening, guys, and if you like this content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below.